Hi there. We've got a bit of a challenging job in today. It's an Aston Martin bumper, a DB5, but it's in an absolutely shocking state of repair. What can we say about the Aston Martin DB5? They were produced between 1963 and 1965 and a little over a thousand were produced in total. We can talk about how it had a top speed of 145 miles an hour and an all aluminium engine, but nobody's really interested in that. The thing that people are really interested in is that it was driven by this man. Bond. James Bond. And what a fantastic looking car James Bond was driving. I can't imagine him in anything better. It had all the performance that he needed, but what made it really special was the gadgets. Everybody loved the gadgets. Machine guns, bulletproof screen, revolving plates, smoke screen, radar. It was fully packed with everything that a 1960s spy could need. It's immortalised itself in film history as one of the top cars ever to be put on the big screen. Even 55 years after it was made it's still an iconic car. That's why it's even been in the modern day Bond films. Now that we've established the DB5 is one of the coolest cars ever made. Let's get on and get this bumper restored. The first thing we've got to do with this bumper is get it back to clean bare steel. So we're going to have to remove the rust. We're doing that here in a tank of hydrochloric acid. It's the same acid that's in your stomach, but a bit stronger. If you like what we do, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll be informed when we release a new video. So here it's going into the stripper tank, which is about 70% sulfuric acid with some of the bits in it. And we pass the current, the opposite polarity that we do when we're plating. So this is actually plating the old electro plating off of the bumper. Now that that's finished, it's just a case of taking it out and then it's going to get a good rinse. You can see from there how rough this bumper really is. Now we're into the polishing shop. Normally we would try and remove all of the corrosion marks in the first polishing operation but on this occasion it's impossible for us to do it that way. There we go, you can't remove marks without making a few sparks. Now instead of trying to remove all the marks we're going to take out just what we can without cutting too deeply. The reason being that our repair guy has got dents and all sorts of things to take out of this bumper and we don't want to take too much metal off it because the more metal we take off the more difficult his job is going to be so we're just going over it removing what we can and then it's going to go for repair and we're going to take it from there we're going to have to rely a lot on building this bumper up with copper because there's just not enough metal there for us to polish the marks out as you can see, it's absolutely covered in holes. And there we are, we've done what we can.
We've really got our work cut out repairing this bumper, but one of the first things we've got to do is cut out the mounting brackets because they've got studs and old bolts stuck in them that need to be removed. It's also going to make it a bit easier to remove some of the dents before we start on filling the, some of those holes. Next, some of the dents are getting attended to. Now, we're not actually repairing this in the way that we really would like to because, frankly, there's just not enough metal left on the bumper to work. In an ideal world, we would be able to chop all of the bad areas out and let new metal in, but because there's not enough metal to work, we're going to have to approach this one in a different way. Here we're making a fillet piece that we're going to weld into the back of the bumper. So we're starting off with a piece that we've bent an angle in and we're just going to put a bit of a basic shape in it. Now it's over to the shrinker stretcher machine where we're going to shrink that edge which will put a slight curve in it. You can see the slight curve starting to appear already. There we go, not too far off. With a little bit more shaping we can get this to fit just how we want it. Now that we've got the infill piece made, it's time to move on to the spot welder. This is a little bit tricky to spot weld in because we've got to try and hit the bits of metal that are actually there and with so many holes in it that's not exactly an easy task. So we're going to hit this with lots and lots of spot weld so it's nice and secure. And now that it's finished, a last little bit of hammer work just to remove any distortion that the welder might have put in and get it back to shape. said before we're going to repair this in a way that's not our first choice we would like to actually replace those holes with steel but we've not got enough metal to work with so we're going to use lead to fill those holes before we can apply the lead we've got to apply tinning paste to allow it to stick to get the tinning paste to work you've got to heat it up you heat it until it goes a silvery colour, then you quickly wipe the excess off with a clean cloth. We've got to do this along the whole of the bumper and anywhere where we need to apply lead or else it's just not going to bond to the steel properly. Now we can start filling the holes using pure lead. Once the lead's applied, because it's standing proud you need to smooth it out so it's being smoothed out with a shaped piece of wood and you need to get it as close as you can to the shape you're after because lead is pretty expensive all the time you've got to keep the lead at just the right temperature too hot and it will want to run off and too cold and you won't be able to work it. We have to continue this process over the whole of the bumper. If you remember how many holes it had in, you can see it's going to take us quite a few hours to apply this lead and smooth it all out. Our repair guy makes this look easy, but it really isn't. You've got to keep the temperature control absolutely right. Too hot and you're going to make fault said it won't stick. Too cold and it's not going to go into all the recesses properly and won't stick. It's absolutely imperative that you get it right. And really the only way to get good at it is through experience. Now that all the lead application is finished, we've got to file the excess lead off 
to reveal the perfect shape underneath. As you can appreciate, this takes a very long time and is hard physical work. Now all the filing is complete, we've got to remove all of those rough file marks with abrasives on a sander. Although removing the file marks is time consuming, at least it's not as physically demanding as doing the filing. Now we're getting to the end, once this is finished it's ready to go back into the polishing shop for more work. Now we're back into the polishing shop. What we've got to do now is go all over this and remove all of the rough abrasive marks that were left from the repairs. We're not going to try and remove too much because we don't want to alter the shape but we've got to remove those abrasive marks. If you like what we do please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and if you hit the notification bell you'll be informed when we release a new video. We've just got to be really methodical to go all over this bumper and then it can go into the copper and we'll put quite a thick layer of copper on. If you think of copper doing in plating what a high build primer does in paint you're about right. And once it's got a good deposit of copper on, we can do more work to this bumper to get it right. Now this bumper's having its first visit into the plating shop. We've got to wire it up onto copper wires so that we can pass an electric current through it. This tank here is a soapy cleaner so as plating is all about cleanliness we're going to give it a good scrub and make sure there's no traces of dirt or grease on it. This next tank is a tank where we pass a current through it and it blasts any oxides off of the surface because it wants to oxidise as soon as it's been polished and any oxides whatsoever will prevent the plating from adhering and you're liable to get plating peeling off. Now we're just going to rinse all the soap solutions off. So we're going through water that's getting cleaner and cleaner. It's called a counterflow rinse system. So we're going to progressively cleaner tanks. Now this next tank that we're going into here is a dilute sulfuric acid. It's about as strong as vinegar and what that does is that's there just to make sure that any traces of the soapy cleaning solutions are off there because if there are any traces it will stain the work. Now to put a good build up of copper on this we need to plate it in an acid copper solution but unfortunately you can't plate acid copper directly onto steel because the acid will attack the steel as it starts to plate. So here we're putting a thin layer of copper on but this is in a cyanide based solution which doesn't attack the steel. And once this protective layer of cyanide copper is on then it's back through all the rinse system again because we can't cross contaminate any tanks with other solutions so we're going through progressively cleaner water again and that's the clean water and then 
into the dilute sulfuric acid. Now when we're going into the acid copper it doesn't matter if we get a little bit of sulfuric acid in because it's a sulfuric based solution and it actually consumes sulfuric in the process. It's not sensitive to pH changes this tank. Now we're back in the polishing shop. There's the bumper after it's come out the copper. This is the morning after it came out the evening before. Now we've got to try and remove all of those abrasive marks that are left in it. So the bits we can get to, we're going to do on a polishing spindle with abrasive belts. But we've just got to go very gently because if we get it hot, it's going to cause a problem. Now, when you copper plate something, the edge builds up like this into sort of, you get a bit of a Christmas tree effect if it's left in for a long time. So we're going to have to trim the corners back because with progressive plating procedures, this will just get worse and worse and it will be very noticeable at the end if we don't deal with it at this stage. So after we've basically knocked the top off it using the abrasive belts, it's time to go over it using abrasive sanding discs and an orbital sander. So we're going over it with the DA. We've just got to go over it and over it and make sure that we get all of the marks out. These are the marks that we're talking about and we need to get those out so we can do it gently you can see here those marks are coming out and once they're all out it's ready to actually be coppered again and we put in this copper in we were trying to achieve was to fill the marks left by the repairs but it's best not to try and do too much in one go because it's more liable to go wrong so on the next coppering operation what we're trying to do is put a nice layer of copper on that we can actually do more polishing to so that we can make it nice and shiny. Back in for the second coppering now. So into the electric cleaner. Now the oxides have been removed again. We're going to go through the rinse system as we did before, progressively cleaner water. And through the dilute acid. Now although this already has copper on it, we're still going to give it a layer of cyanide copper just in case there's a tiny little bit that's broken through to the steel and we haven't seen it because it's just not worth the risk of plating it without that belt and braces protection there. Once it's finished in the cyanide copper we're back through the same rinse system we just did. You've got to be really methodical in the plating shop. It looks like they're just doshing these in and out of tanks, but you've got to be really careful if you touch the side of the tanks, if you touch the bar that's there, then you're going to create problems and marks in the finished product. There's a lot more going on than meets the eye. And also you've got to do it quickly, because if any of this dries off, you're going to cause problems with the plating again. Stains, peeling, all sorts of things. Now it's been in there for a few hours again. It's time for it to come out so it can go back in the polishing shop. Back in the polishing shop and what we're going to do now 
is we're going to go all over this bumper again with fine abrasives this is like about 600 grit I'm going to go all over it and we're just making sure that there's no marks that we've missed on the previous operations so all over it again and once we're confident that there's no pits or any other bits that might need more work or even more coppering then once we've done that we can actually start mopping it up so this is where you'll start to see the shine build now before we can plate this in nickel and chrome it's got to be a mirror finish so this is what we're doing here so this is a polishing mop a polishing compound or polishing soap as some like to call it so we've got to make sure we go all over it and we've also got to make sure that not only do we make it shiny but we've got to re make sure that all of those abrasive marks are removed because 600 grit won't cover if there's any left in, in the plating so it's all about preparation, preparation so it's not okay for it just to be shiny it's got to be absolutely spot on and perfect because anything left in it at this stage will show in the finished article and there we go that's what it's got to be like before you can apply the nickel and chrome now we're back in the plating shop for the final time you can hear a car revving up in the workshop next door now we're being wired up on copper wires again so that we can pass an electric current through it gloves on and here's a soft cloth with the soapy cleaner just to make sure that we've got rid of any traces of grease, dirt, polishing compounds, all that sort of stuff so it's good clean for the inside and outside of the bumper now it's into the electric cleaner so we pass a current through this blasting all the oxides off, what we call this is we call this, this activating the surface of the metal it takes it from an oxidized state which we call passive to an active state so that it'll accept the plating properly now we're going to go through the same rinse system as we have done before so we start off with the dirtier water and going through progressively cleaner water then into the dilute sulfuric acid now before we go in the nickel we've got to swill that acid off the bumper because the nickel solution isn't actually very acidic it's only at a pH of about 5 which isn't much more acidic than your skin so we can't change the pH by putting excess acid in there and there we go that's going to bubble away for a good hour or so to put a nice thickness on now the one thing that's really important about the nickel is that you've got to put it on nice and slowly and you've got to put enough on because it's the nickel that gives the plating all of its good looks and weather protection if you don't apply the nickel in the correct manner you will get a hard brittle stress deposit that is actually porous and will let the weather through to the metal underneath now here we go into the chrome tank now the chrome layer is really really thin it's just a flash of plating over the top of the nickel and it although it changes the color its main job is to really stop the nickel from tarnishing because although it's nice and weather resistant nickel does tarnish like copper or brass 
so without the chrome layer on top you would have to polish your car bumpers every week or so to keep them shiny once the chrome's on top because that doesn't oxidize it's a noble metal like gold you don't have to polish it you just have to keep it clean now here's a tank where we neutralize any traces of chromic acid and as you can see the bumper's basically finished now just a nice rinse in some water and it's time just to hang it up to dry to just let the water off ready for inspection so here we are inspecting it we're just gonna give it a good wipe over this is really to remove all the water marks because when the water dries the minerals and salts in the water stick to it and leave smears on it just like when you wash your car so we're going to get all these off because once we know that it's a perfect mirror finish then it's ready for the customer just making sure there's no defects there we are all finished I've got to say this Aston Martin DB5 bumper was a really challenging project but we've managed to take it from the thing that was basically fit for the scrapyard to this.